Hello my friends. Temporarily, we are away from the fruit and vegetable farms. Today, we are going to some waters of the United States to see how the fishermen here catch thousands of tons of seafood. According to statistics, in 2021, about 8.5 billion pounds of seafood was caught in the United States and brought in about $6.7 billion in revenue. Currently, this country only ranks fifth amongst the countries with the largest seafood catches in the world, and China is at the top of this list. The first place we will visit in this video is the southeastern coast of Alaska. Here, thousands of salmon are prepared to be loaded onto the boat. Mid-May to September is the best time to catch salmon in Alaska. Each year, about 9,100 boats flock to this area to fish and about 34 of these boats will sink or have accidents. In 2021, about 223 million salmon have been caught in this sea and the revenue of this fish is about $745 million. After thousands of salmon have entered the net, they will be pulled by these fishermen on a boat and transferred to the storage tank below the boat. If you have ever eaten salmon, let us know how do you feel about the taste of this fish. According to statistics, in 2021, Norway is the country with the largest salmon production in the world, with 1.4 million tons, accounting for 37% of salmon production worldwide. In second place is Chile, with 778,000 tons. In the United States, salmon caught in Alaska accounts for 93% of salmon production in the country. The remaining salmon is mainly farmed in the waters of Washington and Maine. According to the Alaska Fishing Employment Center, trout fishermen typically earn about 17,000 within three months of working. The second place that we will visit in this video is the flooded fields in the state of Louisiana. Here, hundreds of crayfish traps have been used to trap this creature. Every day, the workers here will use fish as bait and set traps submerged in the water. After about five to six hours, these traps will be pulled onto the boat and this is when thousands of crayfish are harvested. For many years now, Louisiana has always been the leading state in the country in terms of crayfish production. An estimated 125 million pounds of crayfish are harvested here each year. After the crayfish is dumped out of this trap, the fishermen will continue to bait the trap and put them under the water to prepare for the next harvest. Currently, in Louisiana, there are about 1,000 crayfish fishermen and about 1,300 crayfish farmers. After harvesting, millions of crayfish will be placed in these mesh bags and transported to the processing plant. Currently, in addition to Louisiana, Crayfish also appear in states such as Texas and Mississippi. Here's what's going on at a crayfish packing plant. Here, millions of crayfish will be washed before being shipped to the shops. Next, we will go to the west coast of California to see how the process of catching thousands of tuna here works. First, these fishermen will throw thousands of dead small fish into the sea as bait. After noticing the appearance of tuna, 
The fishermen will then use fishing rods to pull them onto the boat. Seeing how they caught millions of tuna seems very simple. Here is the process of catching tuna on another boat. Here, thousands of tuna were hooked to the body by hooks, causing them to bleed a lot. However, this does not affect the quality of tuna meat when processed. Each year, about 5.2 million tons of tuna are caught worldwide, and the income generated from this industry is more than $40 billion. In the United States, the annual catch of tuna is about 12.8 million pounds. Would you rather eat tuna or salmon? Let us know how you feel about the taste of tuna. Currently, we are in the waters of Maine, where the process of catching thousands of lobsters is about to take place. The end of June to December every year is the time when lobsters are most active in the sea. Every day, lobster fishermen will use thousands of small fish as bait. Each lobster trap will use a bait bag like this. After the bait preparation is complete, hundreds of lobster cages will be released into the sea. Currently, there are about 4,500 licensed lobstermen in Maine. On average, each person has 800 traps and the total number of lobster traps used in this sea is about 3.1 million traps. Three to six hours after these traps are released into the water, these fishermen will pull them up to harvest the fruits of their labor. On average, each trap can collect from four to eight lobsters at one time. After catching, the claws of these lobsters will be tied with rubber bands, which makes them unable to attack each other and endanger the fishermen. Each year, lobster fishers in Maine collect about 132 million pounds of lobster and the average price for lobster here is about $25 per pound. Next, we will go to the waters off the state of Missouri to see how the process of catching millions of catfish and pink catfish here works. Thousands of catfish after being pulled onto the boat will be transferred to the storage cellar below. Here workers will clean their organs before storing them on ice. This is the process of harvesting pink catfish. The harvesting of these pink catfish is also similarly done to catfish. Hello my friends, with a vast sea area and abundant resources, American fishermen have taken advantage of these resources to harvest effectively and develop economically. In this video, we will explore the exciting journey at sea of American fishermen, where boats go out to fish and millions of tons of seafood are brought back every year. Firstly, let's learn about the Alaska Pollock fishing profession, which is one of the most valuable professions in the world. According to the NOAA Fisheries Commercial Fishing Database, in 2022, Alaska Pollock commercial catches totaled 2.7 billion pounds and were worth $316 million. Like a giant on the sea, this boat overcomes large waves 
in the hope of encountering large schools of Pollock fish. All their hopes rest on their captain. As soon as the sonar device detected the presence of the Pollock, the captain immediately gave the signal and the fishermen began lowering the net to the seabed at a depth of 16 to 40 feet. The net has a special slope, designed to avoid accidentally catching other marine creatures, such as whales or mud crabs. At the same time, each net will have a sensor that allows fishermen to know when the net is full of fish and can be pulled up. After leaving the ocean, pollock fish will be preserved and processed. Within hours, the pollock will be filleted, frozen and packaged with labels indicating where and when it was caught. Unfilleted meat will be made into surimi, such as imitation crab and other seafood items. Maybe you feel that pollock fishing is quite difficult and dangerous. But for American fishermen, this is a pretty safe bet. The Marine Stewardship Council has certified the Alaska Pollock fishery as sustainable. This is because it has an effective management system that ensures the catch stays within scientifically established limits. From a distance, the boat looks like a stadium floating on the vast ocean and these fishermen are professional athletes in the sport of fishing. They help the annual shrimp output and always lead the country's seafood industry in terms of factory value. Shrimp fishing in the Gulf of Mexico accounts for about 75.6% of total shrimp catch. On boats, they set sail and return from the sea with holds full of shrimp. Have you ever wondered how fishermen catch those shrimp? In general, shrimp fishermen use basic techniques to catch shrimp. The main feature of shrimp fishing boats is the trawl net. You'll see a large specialized net that sinks to the bottom of the ocean and is pulled behind the ship. Depending on economic conditions, fishermen will also equip appropriate boats, support equipment and fishing tools. The fishermen on this boat are casting their nets. You can see that the fishing scale will be proportional to the amount of shrimp they harvest. It cannot be as much as the big boats. After selection, shrimp will be stored in ice cold containers like this. However, this method of preservation is only suitable for nearshore fishing. They will sell to local restaurants or processing facilities. Sometimes fishermen also have quite a headache with these uninvited guests. You see, if these shrimp are not harvested and processed, they will die or be consumed by larger species in the wild. But you can also rest assured because shrimp is a sustainable seafood. Each year, a new crop of shrimp will grow and be ready for harvest. In addition to fishing, fishermen must also comply with guidelines developed by the industry and the National Marine Fisheries Service. The shape of the trawl is similar to a flattened cone, allowing fishing at a wide range. The buoy helps the upper part of the net lift up to easily catch shrimp. Meanwhile, the metal chain on the underside of the net will glide across the seabed, pushing the shrimp into the net. The net will then be pulled by the boat's strong fishermen, released on deck, collected and frozen. For American fishermen, the best thing that they can do is try to ensure that their trawls and fishing efforts do not have too large an impact on the environment. This will help the shrimp fishing industry survive and develop long into the future. Besides shrimp, the US scallop harvest is rising to near record levels as demand for scallops has surged in recent years. Along the Atlantic coast, 
fishermen mainly use dredges or trawlers to catch scallops. Atlantic sea scallops are a smart seafood choice for consumers. Because they are sustainably managed and responsibly harvested according to US regulations. Adult scallops live close together in groups on sandy or gravelly sections of the ocean floor. They are typically found at depths of about 100 to 300 feet. The zipper includes a 4 inch loop that allows small scallops to escape. This is a sustainable fishing method. Imagine if small scallops cannot return to the sea. Then, in a few years, there will be no sea scallops left for the next generation to catch. Before dropping the net into the sea, they will shake the net vigorously again to make sure that all the sea scallops have been taken. Now it's the fisherman's job to collect them and separate the meat from the shell. Then package and preserve the sea scallops in an ice box. These sea scallops are ready to be shipped across the country. After the two fishermen pulled the rope, the nets returned to the sea. There, they will welcome the sea scallops that fall into the net. Finally, the fishermen clean their boats to prepare for the next harvest. Managers have taken various measures to protect habitats from the potential impacts of fishing. Specifically, the alternating approach limits where and when scallop boats can fish. This benefits both the habitat and the scallop population. America is also known as the salmon fishing powerhouse. Nearly one third of the world's wild salmon supply comes from the nets of American fishermen. That means that more than half of America's salmon catch is exported abroad. The Alaska salmon fishery accounts for approximately 90% of North America's wild caught salmon, certified by the Marine Stewardship Council. Not only does it provide nutritious food to locals and restaurants around the world, salmon also plays an important part in the economy. Salmon are born in freshwater and they will spend several years living there before swimming into the ocean. They continue to live in the sea until they encounter fishermen's nets. Their life cycle begins with freshwater waterfalls and ends when they meet these fishermen. Of course, things don't stop there. After many stages of preserving and processing, fresh pieces of salmon will finally appear on people's tables. In the Pacific Northwest waters, salmon are the most valuable and sought after. Species such as Chinook, Coho and Sockeye salmon are caught in this area. People in this area can enjoy an abundance of marine life, which helps maintain nutritionist diets and grows their economies. Pacific salmon fishing is passed down through generations. They fish in combination with preserving their marine ecosystem. Just like that, generation one after another have created a tradition of sustainable fishing over hundreds of years. At the same time, they contribute to the development of the American salmon in the world market. Most Americans are familiar with the story of early agricultural history, but very few people know that the important fish to the first Americans was the Manhattan fish. In North America, people first used Manhattan fish as fertilizer. After many centuries, the uses of this small fish have become increasingly diverse. Manhattan can live to be about 10 to 12 years old and grow up to 15 inches long. When fully grown, they weigh about one pound. This fish migrates in flocks, and each flock can be hundreds of feet long with thousands of fish. Not only that, Manhattan are among the top catchers of all commercial species in the United States, second only to Pollock. 
Manhattan holds a special place in Reedville's cultural history. This is the main employment opportunity for young people in the area, and many have made a career out of fishing. The use of products made from Manhattan has expanded far beyond its original applications. Demand has increased, which means fishermen have to increase fishing to supply the market. Every year, fishermen catch billions of fish from the sea, crush them and turn them into animal feed, fertilizer, fuel and health supplements. This also has some difficulties. In fact, Manhattan fish are a mainstay of the commercial fishing industry, but they are also important to the diet of other species, such as whales, ospreys, eagles, and striped bass. Besides this, they are also considered the water filters of the Atlantic coast. It can be said that Manhattan play an essential role in the marine ecosystem that perhaps no other species on the planet can compare to. When their numbers plummet, the fish and birds that depend on them could be wiped out. Therefore, in addition to exploiting fisheries for economic development, fishermen also have to comply with fishing regulations. This means avoiding overfishing, which harms marine populations. You see, the process of catching millions of tons of seafood by American fishermen is not simply about going out to sea and fishing. They have to deal with marine weather, limited resources and ecosystems. Therefore, American fishermen must apply measures to protect the environment and manage seafood resources to fish them sustainably.